Researchers at Northwestern Medicine have been studying the impact of long COVID for months now, and now there's a new study, and it's shedding light on how the severity of an infection is connected to the long-term effects on your brain. New findings just released this morning show there may be a correlation between the two. So to talk about this, to dig into it more, is Dr. Igor Koralnik, Chief of Neuroinfectious Disease at Northwestern Medicine. Good morning, doctor. Good to be with you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you back. We talked about this in October. We appreciate you being back with us again with this new information. What did you discover in this latest study as far as the correlation between the severity of what we experienced with COVID and the lasting effects on your brain? Certainly. So as you know, long COVID occurs in approximately a third of COVID-19 survivors and often affects their uh, neurological uh, system. So those patients come to see us in the NeuroCOVID-19 clinic at Northwestern, and this study looked at the first 600 patients who came from May 2020 to August 2021, either in person or in televisit from 31 U.S. states. And we compared the 100 patients who were previously hospitalized with severe COVID-19 pneumonia, often had to be intubated in the ICU, with 500 patients who were never hospitalized, only had mild sore throat cough that went away, but then still developed those long COVID symptoms. And what we found is that these two populations, previously hospitalized and never hospitalized, were different the ones who were previously hospitalized were a decade older, 54 years old compared to 45 years old for those who are not hospitalized. They tended to have more abnormalities on their neurologic exam if they were severely affected by COVID-19. They had a more uh, broad, broader type of uh, cognitive dysfunction on standardized exam. And it seemed that they had lost some insight into their cognitive deficit, whereas the, those who were only um, uh, who had a mild uh, initial presentation mainly had deficit in attention. So this uh, is the first time in the U.S. that uh, such study is performed, showing that the uh, manifestation of long COVID are in by and large depending of COVID-19 severity and that those patients need to be uh, treated probably differently uh, for their long COVID symptoms. And doctor, you mentioned loss of cognitive function. That's what you saw in those who were hospitalized and you did make that correlation. Can you break it down for us a little bit? Explain what do you mean? I mean, what could this mean in everyday life? Is it forgetfulness or what, what could we experience from that cognitive function loss? Certainly. So the umbrella terminology for this is called brain fog. It's a term that has been used by the COVID-19 long haulers. Uh, but brain fog means different things for different people. So we ask patients standardized questions about their quality of life uh, called uh, patient reported outcome measure information system according to their self-impression of cognition. That's one way of measuring. But then we uh, test them with validated objective cognitive tests called the NIH toolbox, measuring their processing speed, their attention, their executive function, and their working memory. And we could see that um, the patients who were previously hospitalized had deficit in three of those categories, processing speed, um, attention, and working memory, whereas those who were never hospitalized only had mainly a deficit in attention. Um, so that means that brain fog is not a one size fits all. Um, and we uh, evaluate those patients so that we can then treat them with precision medicine, which includes uh, sending them for uh, precision cognitive rehabilitation at Shelley Ryan Ability Lab uh, with our collaborators. Wow. I wish our time was not up, doctor. There's so much more we can talk about when it comes to what this means, what new research that you're going to be looking at next. So I guess people have to follow your research for that. But thank you for so much for being with us, Dr. Igor Koralnik with Northwestern. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.